Good morning, guys. Before we begin, shout out to my friend Ruben. Ruben, you rock. Today, we're gonna go over 5.5, function operations, which have to do with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of just functions. But normally, this chapter, we're gonna focus on radical and also exponential functions, even though we might you know, just cross regular polynomials and functions. Now, in order to add functions, again, this is example one, page 270. In order to add functions, I have to make sure that if I am given radicals, they are identical. Remember, you can treat radicals as variables, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, and then you just perform normal algebraic operations with them. If I can add like terms, again, if I were to add these two, and how is this expressed? F plus G of X. And when I add these two, pretty much what I do is you write them down, Join like terms, the radicals do not change when you add, and do the normal you know, operations with the coefficients. Three plus negative 10, negative seven. I was also asked in that example to evaluate this expression when x equals four. I'm gonna change at the end, you can also do it in the beginning, but don't do it at the beginning, do it at the end once. Again, one substitution versus two, three, four, maybe eight, 10. So when I substitute my x at the end, square root of four is positive negative two. Let's just stick to positive two, let's stick to positives. Positive two times negative seven, negative 14. That is the evaluation of this expression when x equals four. Again, you join like terms, no change needs to happen, and you go ahead and, and work. While you're working, with some examples, we already saw this, but let me remind you guys, sometimes the book will not give you the exact same radicals. You have to do the toll trick or the supermarket trick in order to sit, or the little, you know, the, the tree, there's a whole bunch of ways I've taught you guys that you can use to, uh, to simplify the radicals. So you have to simplify to the least expression, and then you verify if they are identical. If they are, you go ahead and combine. If after simplifying all of them, they are different, just like algebra. 10x squared plus 6x, you cannot add them. The answer just stays like, they, like that. You know, they are not like terms. In order for these operations to happen, at least addition and subtraction, they have to be identical, much like just basic variables in algebra. Simplify if they are identical, do the operations. Simplify if they are not identical. They can't be combined. You just leave it as, as is, okay? So that's addition. Again, no changes happen. And we just add normally. Now let's go over subtraction. Remember, this is the exact same thing as when we talked about subtraction of polynomials. You're gonna change the sign of everything that you're subtracting by. So if I have, for example, let's do the example in the book. So let f of x be three x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5, and g of x is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. Again, remember what I always tell you guys. Use parentheses. You don't have to use parentheses in the first one. That's fine. 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5. Now, again, some people just directly change the signs, and that's fine. That's how I do it. But uh, to show all the processes and to make sure you don't do a mistake, minus, open parentheses, write the other polynomial as is, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 2. Now I'm gonna rewrite my expression at the bottom. Now I am going to distribute the negative along the entire polynomial that I'm subtracting by. So positive times negative, negative. Negative times negative, positive. Negative times positive, negative. Negative times negative, positive. After you change the sign, distribute the negative, you're gonna combine all like terms. 3x cubed minus x cubed, again, 
and I always write them in standard form from increasing degree to decreasing degree. 3x cubed minus x cubed, 2x cubed, negative 2x squared plus 3x squared plus x squared. Now, since I'm missing my x on this side, I'm just going to write this one as is. There is no x to combine that to. Plus 5 plus 2 plus 7. And then I'm asked to evaluate this expression. That means subtracting f of x from g of x. The, when x equals negative 2. So let's go ahead and do that at the top. And again, this is very important to practice. Remember, I always tell you guys, parentheses really helps you visualize the signs better. Make sure you write your parentheses. PEMDAS. Again, also remember, many students multiply this left to right and raise it to that power. You're going to get a crazy big number. Very, very wrong. PEMDAS. Exponents happen before multiplication. Please remember. Negative 2 cubed, negative 8. Times 2, negative 16. Negative 2 squared, positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 2, positive 8. Plus 7. Add them. 15, 19 minus 16 is... Three. The, the answer to this, f minus g, when x equals negative 2, is 3. We've done this multiple times. It's more or less a review. The kind of new things begin now when we multiply and divide radical and exponential functions. So addition and subtraction are pretty straightforward. What we've been doing throughout, you know, 7th grade, 8th grade, up to now. No changes happen. Now, it's going to get a little bit tricky with radical and fractional exponents. Let's go over example three. Multiply. And it's not that difficult. If you learn the rules of the powers and radicals, as I highly, highly, highly um, suggested, and not, not suggested, you have to learn them or, you know, there's no way you can work. Review them. Use this time to review these rules. Just as, they're just as important as factoring. You're going to need them this year and next year to work. Make sure you get those rules down properly so you can work with exponents and radicals without any issues. The people who are struggling with factoring, take this time to review factoring and, again, review the rules of powers and exponents. Because imagine having to work now with the rules of powers and exponents, and after that, you have to factor the answer. It's going to get just very uncomfortable. Use this time, practice factoring, and practice the rules of the powers and exponents. Now, they tell me that f of x is x squared and that g of x is square root of x. And they tell me, evaluate this expression. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, they do not put a period here so you don't get confused with composition. Evaluate this expression when x equals 9. Multiplication, okay, multiplication. When they give you a, a, a little circle inside, usually that's composition. We're going to get into that later. Um, so in order to multiply, again, normally 85 to 90% nine, nine, of the time, you're going to want to work with exponents, not radicals. There are very few times, and I can give you a couple of examples. Actually, I will give you examples of when it's better to multiply and leave it expressed as a radical. But right now, I'm asked to evaluate this multiplication when x equals 9. So in order to multiply... I have x squared times square root of x. You know, it's very difficult to work with one exponent and one radical. So we're either going to turn both into radicals or both into exponents. I always, rec again, I, I recommend 90% of the time, turn it into an exponent and let's work with fractions. If you remember the rules of the, of the exponents and radicals, square root of x is the exact same thing as x, this power becomes a 2, and this is raised to the first power. 
because I have no other number that I can see. So square root of x is the exact same thing as x to the one half. This also helps you in your calculator. If you need 17th root of 13, you can just raise 13 to the one over 17. And it's gonna give you the exact same answer. That's another way, that, that's why you also need to work with these transformations, because not all calculators give you the ability to just plug in different roots. Most of them do, but not all of them. So again, I'm gonna turn this square root of x from a radical form to an exponent form. So this becomes x to the one half. Again, exactly the same, just expressed in a different manner. Now again, if you review the rules, when we multiply same base variables, they have to be the exact same base. If you multiply x to the one half times b to the three, you don't add the exponents because they are not identical. In this case, since they are both x identical, you can just go ahead and multiply give, if using the rules we learned a couple of days ago. When we multiply same base variables, you add the exponents. So we're gonna add two plus one half. If you have two pizzas and you add half a pizza, you got two and a half pizzas. If you wanna convert this into an improper fraction, multiply and add, and you leave the same denominator. Two times two is four, plus one is five over two. And again, working with these types of problems always turn it into an improper fraction. You'll see why right now. So when I multiply this by this, I add the exponents. When I add the exponents, I am left with this exponent, x elevated to the five halves. Yes or no? Now they tell me to evaluate nine with that really crazy exponent. No, now I return it into a radical form. Again, I put my x, the square becomes the power of the root, two, don't have to write anything because that's a square root, and the five becomes an exponent that covers your entire term. So that is the final like, function that expresses this multiplication. Now I am told, let me erase this so nobody gets confused. Now I am told to evaluate this expression, which is the exact same thing as this, when my x equals nine. I'm gonna change my x for nine and again, only use positives. Square root of nine is three. Three to the fifth power, three times three, nine times three, 27, times 381, times three, 243, times three, 700, I don't know. 243, I multiplied an extra time, strange. Okay, yeah, I, think I, I think I multiplied an extra time. 241. Um, that's the answer, pretty much. Again, you'll see. Um, the, uh, profe, but what happens when this? You're going to have to practice a lot. Um, this is one of the subjects in which you have to, you know, it's impossible for me to list all the ways these things are going to show up. There are infinite ways that this can show up. So this is one of the, of the, of the things you really have to practice. So we're going to practice this a lot. Students sometimes struggle simplifying, adding, they mix up the rules. We're gonna practice this a lot, guys. So again, um, after today's homework, if you have questions, you can ask them tomorrow um, in, 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 in the video conference. We can set that up. I'm gonna explain how that's gonna work right at the end of this video. So that takes care of multiplication. Now let's divide. And again, you'll see when you work on the problems that they have a way of just if you do the proper operations, they just flow. But you have to know what you're doing. Um, now they're asking me to do the following. They're asking me, this is example four, by the way. Find f over g of x. Note, they're always telling me f over g. It could be g over x. It could change. So just make sure you pay attention. And they tell me that f of x, 6x, and g of x is x to the three-fourths. Actually, see, let's leave it like that. Let's not just complicate things. But again, when you're dividing, you also wanna turn everything into exponential 
into an exponential, into a, a fractional exponent. You want to turn it into a fractional exponent. So right now, when I rewrite, oh, and also I have to evaluate that expression when x equals 16. So again, let me just plug in my functions where they have to go. Again, this would be 6x because f is at the top. gx would be 3 over 4. Now, there are two ways you can work with this, and they're gonna give you the exact same result. The exact same result. Using two different rules for fractional exponents. If I have a fractional exponent in the denominator, I can send it to the numerator and change the sign. That's one rule. Or you can also use the normal division rule, which when you have two identical variables, you subtract the bottom exponent from the top exponent. Let's do it both ways. Step one, I'm going to send this variable up here multiplying, and I'm going to change the sign. 6x times x to the negative 3 fourths. Again, I sent this denominator to my numerator, and I changed the sign of the exponent. The sign of the variable or coefficient stays the same. So after I send it up here, now this is a multiplication of identical variables. When I multiply, we just did this, we just have to add the exponents. 1 minus 3 quarters is 6x to the 1 quarter. That's the final expression. I'm done. That's the division. Now I'm going to evaluate this for 16. Now when you're going to plug in numbers, it's always easier to turn it back into root form. And note, this exponent only applies to my x because there is no parentheses. If this were happening, the root would apply to this entire term. Pero, since my exponent is 1, 4, it's only applied to my x, I'm going to turn this expression into the following. Fourth root of x. Because it's easier to work, you'll see right now. I plug in my 16. And via calculator or just normal math, you'll know that the fourth root of 16 is the number 2. 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. So 2 times 6, that's on the outside, is 12. So the answer to this expression is the number 12. And that's it for function operations. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have a very long practice day. What I'm going to do is, I'm not going to send a video tomorrow. In the class answer question form, I'm going to put a list of page numbers and exercises you should be able to do without a problem, normally. Now, if any of these problems give you problems, you know, bad joke, I, I have to include a bad joke at least per video. If, if any of those exercises give you problems, um, Contact me via team and let's set up a video call. If I don't answer immediately to your very urgent response, and even though you guys are incredibly important to me, very, very important, uh, even though you guys, are, you, know, you, you guys are very important, and I do miss you guys, uh, uh, we can set up a time and I can do either individual phone calls to make sure we target specific problems or very small groups of two or three people, no more than that. So if you have problems, Give me a shout out, uh, give, you know, via Teams, private chat, not the group chat, not the forum, via, you know, via private team chat, and we can set up a time to meet tomorrow. Um, so for today's homework, please do exercises 3 to 6 and 7 to 12. That's it for today. Have a great day, guys. See you soon.